Hi guys, this is V Diamond in the Rough and kidding up another one. So this one is the Geisha number five from Royal Diamond Painting. She is a 50 by 135 round and you can see her right here. So she's a fair size. So any kid her up. Now she, I'm going into these and every single one of these will be used. This one has 60 colours. So everyone will be used. Um, I did put a vote out there between Geisha and Anubis um, and it was a mixed bag of both. So yeah, I'll keep both up and I'll work on them as I um, feel like it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Geisha being 60 and uh, this one came with in their little bags. I initially thought I might work out of the bags, but this is 1.3 metres long. By the time I got halfway through, I reckon I would have destroyed these bags, so I will be kicking up into the bottles. Um, I have one interesting bag though, that's all 310. This is the first time I've ever received 310 to that degree. I don't think I've ever had that many 310s in one diamond painting. I've been really lucky. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what I will do is I'll create my labels. The Royal Diamond Painting, they do give you an inventory sheet. Um, so, and it is pretty clear. Uh, and, you know, it's a decent size. So what I'm going to do is use the Xyron sticker maker, which i um, used yeah, for so long it's not funny. Make the labels up. I will time lapse the process of putting the labels on and possibly the bagging up. I may not have to. The bagging up is going to be pretty quick because I'm just going to be opening up from pre-existing bags. So, the Geisha, just put that where I don't knock it over. Hang on. There we go, it's going to hold it down. So if you haven't seen the Geisha, hang on, I'll turn this side. This thing is nearly as tall as I am. Now let's see if it's going to focus. Give it a second. I always find these cameras will focus and then they won't. There we go. Um, they do have the guidance wheels on them, but they are very slight. Symbols are very clear. And yes. It goes forever. This will be yet again another one that when I oh gosh, it's picked up the static on it's kind of static stuff on the bottom on the floor. When I work on this one, like all my other long ones, it will be rolled. I will be rolling it this way. Sorry, I roll it. that way and I will show you why just as a little bit of a hint by doing it that way put the tube on so bear with me have a moment tube Oops. Okay, so that keeps it manageable and work on it like that. If, if I put it up on my easel, it's up like that, this actually will catch any drills that I drop. But that's how I work on my larger ones, my long ones. It's, I always find that doing that, I'm not crushing the diamond painting. I will be leaning on the tube. I do end up flattening these a bit. But I will be able to work on it where it just sits off the table. 
Oh, is there someone out the front row? So what will happen is if you imagine the table is like, well, that's the table, like that, and then this will actually hang off and onto my lap. So working with the large one, so that's the table, that's my bench, this, this bit here is down, like that. So it's just a little hint on working with large diamond paintings where the reason why I work top to bottom, I don't like leaning on drills and knocking them off. That's one of my big ones that I worry about and, you know, ending up with drills on my arm and that. By doing this way and rolling that over, keeping the drills on the outside and away from me, I'm not going to be knocking those and it's going to keep it okay. Whereas if I was working on this one from the bottom up, the drills would end up down in my lap. Um, and I'd be knocking that consistently. So that's how I work with the other one. So from there, I will now get my labels and let's see if I can get this one straight. I will do, can, oh gosh, Bo, seriously. So I'll just do that little one first and then pop this one in. And let's see if I can just gently keep this straight, which it's not going to happen as per usual. Bugger. Okay, I'm going to have to do it. that through I managed to keep the labels one thing about long lists there we go got it Whew. so for those that have seen Anubis was blues the geisha is mainly browns and black and that's a lot of colours. Okay, I'm going to investigate that one. That's the dog saying there's something there. Yes, there was something there. There's door knockers that are across the road. So if my doorbell goes off, I'm not answering it. He can continue to bark at them. So this one here, you'll actually see way to do it. I think I've shown it before where the bottle is the numbers are two then I can't put it side by side. What I do need to do is cut them. Now sometimes I will cut straight down and then across. I'm actually going to do it the other way this time if I can remember where I put my knife. So I use an X-Acto knife, an X-Acto knife is quicker than scissors and I'm just going to use it on this small section first and for those that saw me do the last one, yes, new blade. To keep this central, the last time I did this I just did the one cut down the middle, but there is a big gap between the DMC numbers and the symbols. And it's no good you guys not being able to see anything, is it? Can't, still can't see that much in comparison but so we open this up what have we got one two three four five six seven so labeling these the easiest way to label these is 
Here's the X-Acto knife. And just go from side to side. Remembering that these bottles, because these bottles are not stuck in that one way, it's just easier to lay it down that way and then turn it around when you start working on it. I'll just do these few and then I will show you what I mean. Now for something that I could probably work directly out of bags from, if it was a smaller diamond painting, I probably would just work straight out of the bags. But um, it's more a case of just working out of the bags, it's not practical because I will end up damaging those bags. Okay. So just, there we go. So what you can see, like I've just labelled them sideways and all it takes is just that and then they're all up the right way. I love these bottles because of that. So this is going to hold 60, which is 60 colours. I will go and label these up and then I'll come back to, the, come back to you once these are labelled up. Label's all done. How quick was that? What we can do now is when I bag these up, they will go up the right way and uh, they look all good. So by, actually I'll turn it that way. So you can see when I de-kit, all I will need to do is take those DMC labels off. When the, uh, hang on, I'm just gonna do there we go, made a focus. Um, when I de-kit, because I use repositionable labels, I will, all I have to do is pull these DMC labels off, put them onto my um, cardstock, and then um, de-kitting is that much faster. Here we go. So, let's pretend it's Christmas. I love this sound. When I haven't kitted up for a long time, I so miss this sound. I will actually deliberately watch people kitting up or doing the unboxings just to hear that crackling sound. <laughs> okay, am I nuts or am I nuts? There's a whole poop ton of 310s. Here's my bit of paper. Hang on. I screwed it up because I went, oh, I don't need that anymore. My 310s, where is it? 24,800. That's not too bad going for them. So let's see if I could just quickly sort these into numbers. 16, 12, 26, 19. Nine, eight, six, seven, one, no, five, twenty, fifteen, fourteen, nine, eleven. That's ten. <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Four, 
I must have put them in the other bag. I know when I when I keep blah, 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 let's get this right. I know when I um do the bag count these are all here, so um the excitement exciting thing about bagging these up these are just that much easier to kit up because most of the time all you're needing to do is open the bag and fill it fill the bottle but I'm just looking to see if when I open this bag this is one of the reasons why I don't walk out of the bags because I struggle here. So let's see. I'm looking at this to go, oh, I wonder if there's static in there. And it does look like it. So let's, uh, yeah. Okay, so I've just opened the bag up. And just doing that, there's static. Yay, 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 static. Where are my dryer sheets? I will be back shortly dryer sheets here I will put up in the uh, let's get this in the right spot up here and then the information the how I deal with static but the best way to deal with static is with dryer sheets I'm not going to get all of those in there so there's dryer sheets there is oops that's not cut up two things you do with draw with static one of them is the big tray I put a dryer sheet down what that does is that's an instant instant uh, fix to a lot of the issues with static you drills so so they're not oily it is static okay I'm not going to empty the full bag I don't trust that full bag will fit in there. Okay, hang on, I've got one stuck up there. So with static -y drills, all it takes is generally just dropping it on the paper, dropping it onto the um, dryer sheet. And I do have little dryer sheets cut out already hopefully I won't do it to this now what I will say is the drills that have the static when I come across drills that have static I'm usually pretty happy about that right. now that I've worked out how to do it static I've got one stuck on them now oops that one went flying now that I know have a better idea on how to deal with static there's still some static there it's not as bad because the drills that have got static I find are generally the ones where the drills are actually better quality than anything else than any of the others Oh, where did I put that bag? There we go. So now what I need to do is keep track of what I have extras of. And I'm just looking for one of my textures. Hang on. When I have extras, I like to be able to know that I've got extras. So what I do is on the label, I'll actually put a mark. That way I know that I have more stored aside. Let's see how we go with bag number two. Uh, just looking, sometimes you can see it. Um, but basically what I've got is there is drills sticking to the underside of the bag. Which means static whoa Ooh, hang on where's the small tray so if sorry guys I said to reach stuff 
What do I mean? What do I show? I'll show you the difference between with a tr oh, with a small one. Okay. See how we've got the static here. You can see the the drill's actually sticking to the bag. The static's not too bad. But if I actually straight onto the dryer sheet, they come out, they're happier to come out. That, to me, that's what it seems like. They come out so much easier if I'm actually tipping them straight into dryer sheets. And this is trying to prove me wrong here now. It's definitely trying to prove me wrong. But with static, they bounce around, they whoop. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you down and you can actually come, I'll see if you can see what I mean by static. So bear with me a sec. Can't see it, you see these drills here? It's pretty hard to see on the plastic. But I've had drills just go flying just because I have picked up. So just hang on, I'll just put these to the side and you'll understand what I mean about the static, hopefully. Without going into a dryer sheet, um, I don't want to lift these up, I'll show you what I mean in a sec. Come on, they stick to everything. Okay, <laughs> they do. They literally they stick to everything. So there's no drills. Hang on, there's one, two. I've got no. I've cleared this. There's no. Oh, there's another one because they fling everywhere. Okay, no drills. I hate it when does this. What I have done. Okay, put the plastic back down. No, it hasn't done it. Okay. Didn't, whoops, no, they're popping. They actually jump. Okay, so they do, they jump around and they stick to things and they're an absolute pain in the backside. As you see in the bottle, it's actually coating the bottle. I had to put my fingers on. <laughs> okay, so stick into the hands, they jump. Uh, so one of the things, yet again, I'll put a dryer sheet directly in there. But what I'm gonna do is empty that onto the dryer sheet. And now they're not really sticking to me. There's a couple, there's still a bit of a static but they're not sticking to me. So that's the difference in a dryer sheet. It is instant. I love dryer sheets. If you have a big tray, get a big tray. If you don't have one, I would invest in one if you, if you want to solve your issue with dealing with those. Um, part of the process of bagging up and de-kitting, I've got two choices. I can keep these or I can throw them out. Now these are a little bit smaller than my standard bags. I am actually going to keep them. So I'm just going to grab a... So I will put these away and I will keep the empty bags because when I de-kit, I might as well use those bags as opposed to... Sorry, I've lost some. There we go. I'll use those bags as opposed to my own when I did when I de kit okay so oh let's see how we go if I get this one staticky too without now this is just remembering that <coughs> excuse me 
that I this tray has had dryer sheets on it. It might not be too staticky. Ah, oh, get off. And when they're staticky, you know, if the, if the static wasn't there, I'd be pouring these directly into the bottle. But because of the static, I know I'd just make a bigger mess. Stuck to me. So see, that's that is sticking straight away. It's sticking to me. I will just rub them a bit with the dryer sheet. And they're not, there's a difference. A couple there, but not much. So that is uh, how I go with dryer sheets. One, five, nine. Okay. So I'm going to speed this process up. Well, I'm going to speed it up for you guys. And, whoops, get in there. Still static because I didn't pour it straight onto the dryer sheet. But yeah, I will speed this up and get back to you when I am all kitted up. I'm briefly pausing here. I did believe that this was going to be a quick kit up. Um, this is not a quick kit up because of all the static. What I have done so far, um, I think I've gone up to bag, up to number 16. Not, I didn't empty all the bags completely because of the static. I just, I'm not dealing with the static. <laughs> Uh, struggling with it. So what I'm going to do is the ones that I haven't kitted up yet, hang on, that goes back to there. What I will do is inside this bag, I'll put these, I'll pop them in the freezer because that is one thing that does apparently help them out. They haven't, the freezer's not worked for me so far, but I'll cross my fingers that it's going to work for me this time. Uh, so I'm going to pop these in the freezer. You're not going to notice any difference except for the fact that this will probably lay out look different. But I will come back when these are been in the freezer for a couple of hours and see if that makes a difference and um, we'll continue on kitting up. Okay guys, I um, started kidding up and had to stop and then kidded up, started kidding up again and I had to stop and then I think I had the third go at kidding up which is what I've just done now and I forgot to hit the record on it. So I'm now kitted up, all 60 colours are in the bottles. You will see in the top I have all my colours that are too much to fit into the bottles. That being said, those that um, there's too much to fit in, 
I did put next to the symbol, Let's see if we can get it for you, a dot so that therefore I knew that there was more of those. So that's in there. The bags that I got the drills from, because the static, I didn't actually end up pulling out the drill, all the drills. I've left them in there. If I need them, they're there, but there's not enough to warrant any real major concern. But I will, when I, if I do run short, I will be looking here first. Alright, so there we go. Now, Geisha is all kitted up, 60 colours. She is going to be awesome to do. Okay, and that's all good to go in the 60 bottle. And I will show you, put that away. So here she is here. I have her, I actually have her, this is how I hang my diamond painting. So that's on a skirt hanger or trouser hanger. And I actually do have it rolled up ready to go. So when I'm ready to do this one, all I need to do is just pick it up off the off my, out of my wardrobe and um, this one will probably get done on the easel. But yeah, looking forward to doing this one. Um, hopefully this one doesn't offend anybody like my last one seemed to have offended one person. Um, but you can't please everybody and yeah quite happy for you guys if you see what I mean um, go and have a look at Anubis there were some comments made by one person but so this is the round there we go so this has got very faint guide circles and it's got all the colouring behind it so there, that's going to be really gorgeous to do yeah 50 by 100 and, whoops, bring it down 50 by 135 round and I've got her picture there so guys thank you for watching um, <laughs> yeah this the way things have been lately they've been a bit crazy which is probably why I forgot to hit the record button got the program up and the camera all in place but yeah he forgot to hit the call. so guys thank you for watching uh, please give me a thumbs up thumbs down leave me a comment and um, if you haven't subscribed yet please um, consider subscribing and hitting the bell because then you'll get notified when I do upload anything and for those guys that are subscribed thank you very much for subscribing to my channel and um, yeah I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.